history. You're the only coach in sports history who went through two relocations. Those are brutal. Uh, by the way, there it does appear to be a, a, a little bit of a cyclical trend. I don't think it's cyclical. I think it's a trend. The Rams decided last year we're not playing our top starters. We're just not doing it. Uh, and I don't, I don't disagree with it. Julio Jones is like, I'm out. I'm not playing this. Uh, Jeff, I, I understand players now. Short window, money's huge. Do you think going forward um, – the, the, the preseason's going to get cut here. Players are telling you. If coaches are telling you. We don't want to. We don't want to play our best players. Well, yeah. Eventually, it's going to happen. Eventually, it's going to go to two, 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 probably two games. I right. mean, you could see one or maybe some joint practices. But yeah, if you look, we look back this weekend, and I just kind of looked at it from afar. On there, there's significant injuries in just the first preseason game, sixteen games. Right. So yeah, coaches are nervous about it, and you know, you saw it turning ten or twelve, fifteen years ago. You no, I'm not so sure. I'm going to play Eddie George in the first two preseason games, and now what Sean did last year with both Todd and and Jer- uh, Jared, and and then some more guys on the team. I mean, it makes sense to just rest them right now. Today's Monday. Okay, this after the preseason weekend. This weekend. Today's the day that all these guys are getting their work, and they'll get their work today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, and then they'll start to back off, and then they'll get the rest of the roster ready for these Did games. Did you like joint practices? Aaron Rodgers says, I like the physicality, but I don't like some of the things we do. Um, you know, live special teams can scare. Well, what my takeaway has always been if a college staff with 18- and 19-year-olds – don't need four preseason games, then a 27-year-old NFL guy who has double the practice time is a grown-up, is an adult, doesn't need four practice games. Um, would, would I mean, you, you tell me, if I said joint practices whenever Jeff Fisher wants them, one preseason game, would it be enough? I would do two joint practices, probably two, two to three-day sessions, uh, against maybe two different clubs, yeah, that would be enough. That'd now, be enough. College is not going to use do the preseason because they got a hundred kids, and you you can you can have a, a defense playing a game over here and an offense <laughs> playing a game over there at the same time. So there's plenty of guys on the roster to do that. But uh, yeah, I would say a couple of joint practices and a game or two would take care of it. Let's talk hard knocks. You were on hard knocks. Some like it, some don't. Uh, you know, Oakland's a little bit of a circus. Uh, I I strongly believe Jeff that they're trying to sell tickets mark davis is by put it in context he's the poorest nfl owner they can't sell out oakland vegas has a hockey team and those tickets are hot he's moving into vegas they need to sell forty thousand season tickets i get the marketing angle did you like it as a coach i loved it now let me give you the background for three years, they came to us when I was in St. Louis and said, we want you to do it. And it was, no, we want you to do it next year. No, we didn't want to do it. And then finally, the league passed a resolution to where you can't say no. Right. And so we accepted it. And, and it was presented to us. It was the first time that, that NFL films and everybody else would be able to, and Hard Knocks would capture a move. It, none of the relocations in the past have been captured. Okay. So they captured our move. But um, I enjoyed every minute of it. The producers, the crew, the film guys, the sound people, everybody associated were very, very professional, fun to work with, and it wasn't a distraction. And what everybody had told us in doing our research was as soon as you get through day one or two, they just disappear. And that's what, in essence, they're, they don't feel like they're any, they're, they're any longer there. Now, I do have this, and here's the, uh, let me give you this visual. In the head coach's office, during the hard knocks, there's a camera up here and a camera over there, and they're both pointed at you. So you're sitting there by yourself. You walk in the morning, like, good morning, guys, how you doing? And the cameras are going like this. <laughs> so how was the night? And the cameras are going like this. Go, hey, guys, guess what? I need about five minutes to make some personal calls here. So we give you some time. The camera nods. It turns around backwards, faces the wall, and you got your time. So those types of things still take place during the, you know, the filming, the production of Hard Knocks. So you probably see more of those in the intimate staff meeting room. So you're not getting 100% of what's going on. Could you, Jeff, say, I don't want that to make it? Yes. You yes. can. You, I don't want to say I had, had final edit, but I'm going to watch the entire show before the, anybody else sees it Tuesday night. And I'll watch that Sunday night or Monday. And, you know, I'm just not – I think we need to protect this information or – out of defense of this player, this is just not 
Did you ever worry that players were acting to the camera? Not uh, not on the practice field, not in the meeting rooms, but goofing around and doing other things. Yeah, I mean, you know, we had that one episode where they took a couple of our guys up on the blimp, you remember? Yes. And Jared was in the blimp, and they, they asked Jared, what, what directions does the sun rise, the east or west? And he didn't know. Yeah. You know, so yeah, off the field and out of the meeting rooms or when you're doing football, players, players are not making a movie. Let me ask you about um, Freddie Kitchens gets a job. You're a veteran coach. I do believe the Rams trust Sean McVay. Les Snead has rolled the dice on Indomitian Sue, Marcus Peters. Andy Reid had players with some baggage character issues. What I worry about with Cleveland, Sheldon Richardson, um, OBJ hasn't had what issues, but he's dramatic. He's a a global star. Um, uh, Cromartie, they've already suspended him. Because I think you can win in this league, having a couple of guys that can go sideways, but if you put them in a good culture, it works. So, But Freddie Kitchens is a rookie head coach, and John Dorsey, the GM, uh, is one of those guys where I'm going to get you talent, you figure out how to coach it. That worries me with a rookie coach. Give me an go back to your career. Was there a year or a moment for you, Jeff, in your career where you thought, wow, this is close to being too much drama? Well, I did have a moment, but I'll go back to that in a minute. But as far as Freddie's concerned, uh, as long as he does basically two things be himself and tell the truth, he's going to be fine. It's when you say something other than what you truly believe because the players will buy into it and they'll find out. They'll figure it out. So be truthful and be yourself and be passionate, love the game. And and you have to learn to treat everybody differently under the same set of rules. They're all different. But you have to be able to pull everybody together in the same environment and understand why we do this and we don't do that and explain it to them in such a way they can. Uh, You just can't say, I'm going to fire this guy if he does this. And or I'll fire you if you do that or go ahead and fire somebody. So uh, that's the and, and there's no substitute for experience. You have to learn. And it takes a, 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 it takes a long time. I say this. I said this many times when I first got the job and Freddie, mind you, 80 percent of his stuff right now in, in his day is is X's and O's. Yeah. And 20 percent is dealing with these guys. Right. OK. He's going to find that in a few years, eight or 10, whatever it is, that that's going to flip. And then 20% of his time is X's and O's and 80% of his time is dealing with the players because ultimately his responsibility beyond the X's and O's and game planning is to make sure that they're mentally, emotionally, physically, even spiritually prepared for the day. So at the end of your career, you were dealing with more of that than schematics. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially considering the move. You move three times and move from one city to the next and move out here and where we're going to play. And all, oh, yeah. And then all the travel. Oh, yeah. It's all about it's all about sleep. It's all about diet. It's all about recovery. I'm trying to take care of them so there's no distractions in their life. When mom calls on Friday and she wants a di- different color Escalate and she wants it now before a big game on Sunday and your player can't deal with it. No, you got to talk to mom for him. Because I'd rather I need him focused on the game plan rather than wow. where do I get the why what do I how do I ensure you know wow. all that stuff so let's go back I, and I and I have said this about uh, uh, full disclosure I said this when you weren't on the air I said uh, Jeff Fisher I feel bad for defensive coaches Rex Ryan similarly the sport marginalized you suddenly you couldn't coach the same way I mean let's be honest about this league you can't put your hands on anybody you can't hit anybody you were a very intimidating coach Rex Ryan's a very intimidating coach getting guys faces hit them a little late that was the sport for a long time suddenly you can't do any of it there's safety concerns that's the new cultural zeitgeist in football in America less practice less hitting did you feel like like with the Jared Goff situation you had Greg Williams you defense and the world was changing and you had Jared Goff and suddenly you could make the argument the Rams needed an offensive guy because this is the franchise, not Aaron Donald. Did you feel like in the end in Los Angeles that it was the league's changing? I got a young quarterback. I'm more of a defensive guy. Did you worry about that? Did you feel that? No. I, well, obviously, it, that's the way the league has gone, and and that's all well and good. I Actually, we got in a situation where – 
we turned things around with Ron Schottenheimer, who's now coordinating for the Seahawks. Yeah. And, and so, uh, but Shotty had a personal, some personal reasons t- for wanting to leave. We tried to keep the offense intact and it just didn't work. Right. So, um, you know, as a, as a head coach, uh, you're going to get into the league by and large because you're a play caller. You're an offensive coordinator. You're a defensive coordinator. You're a play caller. But over time, the duties on Sunday become so overwhelming, you're going to delegate. Yeah. So, so I delegated the offense, and but I got also I take responsibility for uh, for you know our ineptness over that that period of time. But uh, I also, with respect to Jared, was we drafted Jared. We had an opportunity to choose between Jared and Carson, and that was a really good problem to have. And so we chose Jared, and we brought Jared on at a very very slow. Pace. I wasn't thinking of Jeff Fisher. I was thinking about what was best for Jared Goff. So we didn't start him for six or eight weeks, and we just brought him along slow, thinking about what's in the best interest of his future. And then obviously Sean come in and takes it and runs with it and does a great Are job. Are you with surprised that. by his quick development? No, I'm um, not at all. Because um, unlike most situations where now Freddie, we could probably make a case. Freddie's probably in a similar situation because he's got good people around. Uh, we had a put together a pretty good roster. So we had a good roster when Sean came in and took over. I mean, you had, we needed some receivers. We needed a couple positions, but, you know, the defense was good. And, you know, as a matter of fact, some good players left. So, and right. they still had the success. And, I, and um, you know, I, I think the world of him and, and even Super Bowl Sunday, I, you know, I'm pulling for these guys because three quarters of the guys that were playing were guys that we brought there that I had, yeah. uh, you know, some say in. And, but, uh, you know, Wade has done a great job with the, the, the culture of that team, as has Coach Fossil. And you take the three of those and you got the top three coaches in in those areas an offensive coordinator in his mind and yeah. then you got McVay. way and then you got fossil and, and that's how this league is so the stronger your assistance the more success you're going to have hi everybody thanks for watching subscribe here to get the latest from the show also be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on fs1